Hi everyone and welcome to this newest video. So this will be a series of four videos about RTM molding. So I'll take you through making the master, making the first mold, making some parts, and then making the RTM mold to make some parts out. So these videos will be coming online the next few weeks. If they are already online, you can find them in the description. So now listen what I had to say back then about this uh, video. I have to say back then when I was making these videos, I was like a total noob, so I didn't know a lot. I didn't know the products. I just followed the videos that were online already. So back then in 2012, there weren't that much videos. So I've learned most of it from the videos from Easy Composites, um, but this can be done in a better way. So that's about it for the recap of this video. So the announcement now is that if you're interested in it i would be willing to remake this video in 2020 um, so i still have to make the molds i still have the part i don't have the mold so the mold was from school uh, but this was a pretty cool mold and i'm going to make a new mold and teach you everything again but in full hd <laughs> this time and probably with a better finish as well so let me know in the comments if you want to see that video uh, later on if you're interested in it and so having said that I'm ready with a new tutorial so I'll make some improved uh, techniques to make this part uh, I'll also mention a bit more about uh, different infusions I did on this so all the changes that I made and you will be able to see that in the next three videos so after this one there will be three other videos explaining everything about that RTM mold so to start off um, this is the part that came out of the mold back then so this is just uh, chop strands fiberglass with polyester resin uh, back then I wasn't that good with resin infusions and such so I had to do some fixes before making a mold out of this part so first of all I trim off the side the, all the sides because I want to have it like a bit more um, a bit lower profile of the porch so it's like a big um, it's a bit bigger than it's looking like a bit more streamlined um, and then obviously as well uh, it's very important to sand uh, everything back down so everything is flat this part has been laying around in a workshop for about five years so silicons dust uh, oil and mists of oil might have gone onto the part so i want to make sure that there are no contaminations on this part so i sent everything back to like the original polyester um, just to make sure i have a good bond with the um, pattern primer that will be coming on top of this so um, also very important this was a 1k primer and 1k paint on top so from a rattle can and these types of um, rattle can spray paints might cause some problems with polyester resins and epoxy resins so now we're going to use the pattern primer to create like a nice seal on top of the part so the pattern primer is an easy sandable polyester resin that you can put on top of parts um, this is like great stuff so um, easy composites is selling the uh, coupling uh, the pattern coat and a gloss coat as well mostly i just use the pattern coat if you want if you want to have like a nice and high gloss on your parts you might add a gloss coat on top of that as well so very important is to mix the can well shake it well because um, it has like some kind of fillers into the the resin so you mix them well and then you add some mcp harner so normally i would say add around uh, one or two percent depending on the environment you're working in so temperature will have a big influence on like how fast your resin might cure and how much time you might have to apply it so the first coats mostly I apply them by brush because I want to have like a thick coat I can sand um, through and make everything flat so this is the first coat so I have a f uh, like a few marks um, into it it's not a big deal because a second layer will be added uh, as well so here's like a quick tip make sure you brush uh, all the edges of your cup as well and then it will be very easy to remove 
your brush can be cleaned with some acetone and then you're ready to apply the second coat. So for the second coat, we'll use like the same process. So uh, just with a brush again, a small cup, I think around 100 grams is enough to cover a part like this. And then we'll just let it fully cure. And then in the next steps, we'll be applying it with a spray gun to have a nicer finish. So this is a result after two coats. As you might see, you still have some drips. You have some marks from your brushes, but it's not a big problem because we'll sand this flat before spraying it on to have like the nice last final finishing coat so first i sand all the edges and then i've used my sanding machine just to go over the entire part so i've used around a 150 grit on the sanding machine and then just by hand i use a 240 so it's not so important to have like a nice high gloss finish in this stage because you still want to have like a good mechanical grip with the next layers coming on top because you want to remove all the like imperfections into your first layers so talking about the brush marks drips uh, and so on so it's not that bad to send through the pattern primer here um, later on we'll be applying it by spray again so as we're making a mold it's very important to have a good flange so we'll be using some putty just to create like a nice rounded edge with the um, rest of the plate so the plate will be building the mold on so i'm using like a little bag here to like have a nice spray um to put down this um bondo on the edge so what i did is i've marked it down on the plate and then i just put like a good amount on it so now we're like gluing the parts onto a base so that will be the flange of the mold we will be making later on in the next few videos so here i'm using like the i think it's called a ball tool or something like that you can find it on the website of easy composites just to create like a nice overlap like a nice transition between the parts and the base so why i'm doing this at this stage is because first of all i want to bond it onto the plate and secondly it's easier to like have a nice um, edge now send it down a bit and spray over it so you don't have direct contact with this bondo and your mold making a gel coat later on so um, if you still have some marks you can clean it with the mold cleaner or some acetone just make sure that you work in a clean way because if this um, bondo cures um, like to the fullest it will be kind of hard to remove so um, here I'm just cleaning like it's a quick rub over the bondo because it was applied quite well um, just to remove like the, the little skin that it has on top so to create like a good bond with this layer that we'll be putting on top so everything is still exactly the same so this would be the third coat only small difference is, is I've added some blue pigments just to make sure like if you sand through this layer you'll notice it because you'll see like um, a transition between the blue top layer and then the gray layers uh, down below so it's not like fully blue it's just adding a bit of blue tint um, then i add some mc p hardener so the mc p hardener is important for it to fully cure and now like the most important thing is to add some acetone so i think you can add in between five and twenty percent uh, just keep the amount as low as possible um, because you don't want to add like too much additional materials to your pattern primer because it could weaken the resin or make it not fully cure but this will slow down the curing process a bit and make it more liquid as well so while spraying normally the um, acetone will evaporate or over time um, from your part so here i've just taped everything off so i'll say i'm not like a professional and good spray painter um, i'm just good making a few like simple parts i'm okay with sanding them back down if needed um, so i wasn't expecting like a high gloss so this is a 2.0 uh, spray gun as well so it's not like the finest one uh, but it's good to just like add a nice even coat over your entire part and most important like the transition between the base plate and the um, 
shape that we've made. So here I'm just adding um, all the material on top of this part and I will have like a nice and even coverage. So there will still be orange peel but I'll also mention that it's not that bad because it's like a nice and easy sanding guide to see where you already sand it and where you can go down just a little bit more. So while the resin is still not fully hardened I remove everything around it just to avoid having the resin like the pattern coat peel off with the tape or the tape being stuck under it. Um, so here we have it so it's once cured uh, into a dull finish so like I mentioned it's not like the high gloss perfect finish but it's good to start sanding so instead of using a 150 and 240 grit now we start with a 400 because we're like quite close to finish. So as you can see how easy it is to sand, so this isn't sped up or something, it's very easy to sand and with like the orange peel it's removed in a fast and easy way. So I've used the 400 grit and then I just um, add some control powder or I think it's like, um, I don't know how it's called, like a, a pattern um, sanding key or sanding coat. Um, but what it does is like it's a fine powder and it will get into all like these small scratches that you've made with the previous sandpapers and then you'll be able to see where you have to sand a bit more. So I'm just wet sanding it with a 400 and then I think the last layer was a 800 grit and that's mostly like enough to make like a pattern because it's not needed to go up to a 2000. Um, in this stage because we'll still have to sand the mold as well later on. Now we're at the polishing, polishing state so I'll be using um, this is a Makita polisher um, and just using like the two compounds so one is with a large cut and a lower finish and the other one has a lower cut and a higher finish. So with these two products I'm okay with the finish so this is still the pattern primer so if you want to have like a really high gloss coat I don't think you'll get much further than this with the pattern coat um, then you'll just have to add the uh, gloss coat as well it can be sprayed as well if you want to but I don't think that it's that important for making the molds because like I've mentioned you can also still polish the molds later on so the gel coat that we'll be making in the few next videos and that's like an easier and better way to finish your mold to high gloss. This is the finish we'll be working with to make the mold off. So now it's very important to get like everything ready for the mold making. So it all starts with cleaning the parts again. So it's a lot of cleaning, but it's, it's like very important not to have any contaminations causing some problems with the mold making and so on. So we've used some polishing compounds, um, and it's very important like to clean everything so you don't have like any possible contaminations later on. So here we'll be using some flitim wax because what I now like to do is add like an, an extra side to the mold to create like more of a box shape so it adds a lot of rigidity to your mold instead of having like a flat flange. Uh, but then once again it's important to have like a good flow in between the two edges so rounded edges uh, are easier to laminate and to demold so that's why I've used some filleting wax with the I think it's called ball stick or the the ball shaper or something like that um, and so this is like the end of, the, of this video so we'll add the release agent one of the most important steps <laughs> because if you don't use release agent everything that you do on top will be stuck so this is the end of this video and now what you can expect from the coming videos will be like a lot more complicated, a bit more complex and a bit more detail. Um, so it will be about making the mold. So as you might see in the future video, some problems went on. Uh, the other video about mold repair is already online so you can find it. Um, I had to do some repairs. Uh, be creative in some ways but everything turned out well so I hope to see you in the next video and the video after and after so if you want to see all the videos make sure to subscribe if they are already online you can find them down below in the description so I hope you like this video make sure to subscribe leave a like and see you guys in the next one thanks for watching